So if you get arrested for something, and hopefully it's bogus charges anyways, right? You get arrested for, for whatever. And you know people are going to say all manner of evil against you falsely. If you're living righteously for Jesus Christ, don't be surprised if it happens. And you know what? Don't be surprised if it happens to me. And, and we ought to, you ought to be prepared for that. And hopefully you could understand enough to, to not just be tossed about with every accusation that flies around. But look, if I do something wicked and wrong and there's evidence for it, I'm not asking anybody to, to stay by my side or to support me or anything like that. But I would just say this, is that we know that there's a lot of, of people out there that are trying to go after righteous people, people who are promoting the Word of God, people who are trying to do good works. And you have to realize that those people exist out there. And don't be, don't be you know, as Jesus' disciples bailed on him right. when he was getting arrested and stuff, you know, be there for the person who's being persecuted and don't just accept the lie. I mean, look, again, you're going to have to, if, if, if or when these things ever do happen, you're going to have to be able to weigh evidence and make a judgment. But don't just let the accusations be enough to convict somebody. If I have this wisdom, if anything like this happens to me or if it happens to you, the, one of the wise things to do is going to be to go ahead Prove whatever it is you're trying to, sit to, to say against me. Because who knows what people will try to accuse you of. You know, it could be anything. But if you're not just opening up... Because what they try to do is smear your character, get you to screw up, get you to make some, some mistake in either your recollection or in your answering these questions. And they'll try to get you to say something, to say, oh, well, see, he's covering up for something. He's lying because... They use their words to try to deceive you and set traps for you that if you accidentally just fall into that trap, even if you're not trying to like hide anything or cover anything, they could just get you to this point. And I've seen it even with the, some of the false confessions that people make where, where people who are really good with their words and really wear down on a person and just keep them locked up in these little interview rooms and, you know, they're stuck in there and they're in there for 8, 10, 12 hours. And there's just already a stressful situation. Maybe someone got killed or whatever. And they're just like, they just lay into them and they just keep messing with their mind. We know you did this. We've got other people that say you've been doing. They lie and they say all these things against them to try to get them to just say they did something they didn't do. And it happens. But if you're not saying anything even though they're saying, oh, well, this person said this and that person says that. Don't say anything. Don't self-incriminate. It's a wise thing to do. Keep that with you, you know, for, for the day. I mean, God forbid that, you, you know, I hope, I hope nobody gets arrested. I don't want anyone to have to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. But let's learn from Jesus. That's, that, and, you know, this wisdom was built into, thank God, was built into our form of government here in the form of the Fifth Amendment. And I believe that the reason why that exists is because the people that started this nation relied much more heavily on the Word of God to give them guidance in how to create a, a, a nation or a set of laws that were going to be good laws. And, and that was one of those things. And they're just, just elevating that and saying, no, you, you need to know about this. And this is something that's good that, that can't be infringed on. So we see Jesus, the example, doing this for us. Let's look at ver uh, verse number 15. Let's continue on for, from that point. It says, now at, the fee at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. So it was a normal thing. It was kind of a traditional thing for the governor to be able to release a prisoner at this time. This is a special feast for the Jews. And he knows, okay, well, he's disposed to allow a prisoner to be released. Just show some grace, show some forgiveness. It's a special time of year. It's a Passover. So he'll do his thing, kind of like the president, you know, 
gives a stay of execution on a turkey on Thanksgiving, except this is with a real person, right? They're, they're going to allow someone to be released from prison. And it says in verse number 16, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Now, it doesn't go into the details here, but we know that Barabbas, his notable means like he was famous. So like everyone knew who Barabbas was because of what he did to land him in prison. Because he, he made this insurrection and he, I think he killed someone in the insurrection. It was just like he was, this, he was not a good guy. And he's in prison. Everyone knows he's causing a bunch of trouble. So one of the things that Pilate does here is just like, well, do you want Barabbas or Jesus? Because Pilate actually wanted to release Jesus. Part of Pilate saw, and we're going to see this in a little bit, he sees he didn't do anything wrong. He knows that Jesus is innocent. He sees how guilty people act. He sees how innocent people act. He sees how Jesus is acting. He sees the people who are bringing them unto him. He sees all this stuff. He's not stupid. He's not having the wool pulled over his eyes. He can see what's going on here. So one of the ways he tries to get them to just release, you just be like, okay, it's gone far enough. Like, like let's let Jesus go is he pulls out this guy who's real notable going like, are they going to want this guy to be released? Right? Are they going to want Barabbas to be freed, to be set free as opposed to Jesus? So he kind of just, just gets this, you know, I mean, you're comparing this guy said he could des de destroy the temple and build it in three days. And this guy for murder and insurrection, you know, like, you want me to release one of these guys? And look what it says. It says, um, verse number 17, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? And it says, verse 18, For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. He knew it. And this is the narrator saying that. We know the narrator knows Pilate's heart and that Pilate knew that they delivered Jesus for envy because they're envious of him and they wanted him dead. He knew the reason. He knew the reason. 